My favorite science toy is a plastic bag, specifically an uncut 50 foot long garbage bag. Ordinarily, this roll of plastic would be heat sealed every few feet and perforated so that you can tear bags off one at a time. But if you don't heat seal the sections, you end up with a giant plastic tube. If you then tie off the end and fill it with air, the sun hits the black plastic and warms the inside, turning this tube into a giant flying hot air balloon noodle. This is an awesome way to entertain a group of kids and learn a little bit about gas density, buoyancy, and how to capture solar energy. You just need to keep it tied down to make sure no air traffic gets disturbed by the fun. I've used these solar balloons for a few years in a row to entertain kids in summer classes. And recently I've been thinking about how I might make this demo even bigger. Something like a solar powered weather balloon. I am not the first person to think of this, and in fact, my research quickly got sidetracked watching these hot air balloon launches in Indonesia with firework payloads. This is simultaneously the best and worst idea for a celebration that I think I've ever seen. I would be so tempted to try this for myself if it weren't for uh, this. And this. But what's the celebration for without a little excitement? Okay, back on task of making a giant solar balloon. The best info that I found was on a 15-year-old WordPress site called Bovine Aerospace, and they used very thin painter's plastic cut into sections the shape of an orange slice so that once joined together, the pieces form a sphere. You've seen this pattern before on a beach ball or a globe. These divisions of the surface, which narrow toward the poles, are called gore sections. And this is the simplest shape you can use to conform a flat surface like paper or a sheet of plastic to the shape of a sphere. Sadly, this means that making a spherical balloon is a lot of work. It's not easy to accurately cut shapes like this out of 30 foot long sheets of plastic and join them together in your backyard shed. One thing I do like about Bovine Aerospace's weather balloon design is that they are actually solar powered. To heat the air, all he does is take a handful of very fine charcoal powder and throw it inside, allowing it to coat the plastic so that it becomes dark and absorbs more sunlight. This alone gives enough lift to do stuff like send a camera and research equipment to 72,000 feet. That's pretty impressive for a balloon that doesn't use any fuel or a lifting gas like helium. For my own purpose, which is simply to make a fun physics demonstration and not a real payload carrying weather balloon, I think that I can take some shortcuts in the construction. Going back to the original flying tube, this should not be too difficult to replicate on a larger scale. For example, using a roll of painter's plastic to turn this into a tube, all that really needs to be done is to join the edges together. And this roll could theoretically make a tube 400 feet long with a circumference of 12 feet. That's pretty big. Now to work properly, a solar balloon needs to be made from extremely thin plastic. This is the thinnest that I could find, only 0.31 mils in thickness. That's at least twice as thin as an ordinary grocery bag. If you can't find this thickness in a local hardware store, you can find it online on either Amazon or eBay in 12 or nine foot wide options. 12 is obviously the best for the biggest balloon possible. You could of course also double up the width to make even larger balloons, but we'll start with only one width because that's much easier. So here's what I came up with to actually turn this into a tube. To get the job done in a small space, we'll be doing it in sections with a wood plank as a work surface. This roll of plastic goes on one end of the board and I pull out enough plastic to reach the other side. This will be easier if we can find the edges of the plastic sheet without completely unfolding it. 
And once I find one edge, it's attached to the board with a few pieces of masking tape. All we need to do now is find the other edge, bring it around the board, and join it to the first one. That would be easy, except that plastic sheeting like this is extremely slippery. Almost nothing sticks to it. To make real weather balloons, the common method is to melt the sheets together with a hot iron. And I tried this method for quite a while, dialing in the perfect temperature. It's more difficult than you might think. Too little heat and the sheets don't stick together. Just a little bit too much and they shrink and tear. And often still don't stick together. I don't know how anyone does this reliably. So instead, I started doing some tests with various adhesives. I'm excited about the sponsor for this video. I've been working on a number of different solar-related projects, and when it comes to solar, home energy storage is a particularly important topic. My sponsor is Anchor, who have made this awesome home power system, the Anchor Solix F3800. This is a battery backup unit for your whole house, replacing a noisy gas generator and compatible to be recharged with up to 2400 watts of solar power, or charged by an AC outlet connected to the grid so that it's always ready to go. I don't own any electric items that can max out the rated output of this power station, including my central air conditioner. This can deliver 6,000 watts at once, at 120 or 240 volts, to power any home appliance, more than enough to power two electric heaters and a hairdryer simultaneously. The base capacity is 3.8 kilowatt hours, and with additional battery expansions, you can reach a huge 26.9 kWh, and optionally, this can also pair with a second unit for double the capacity and 12,000 watts of power output. This unit alone can charge an EV with enough juice to drive about 15 miles. You can use the outlets on the side here, just like any outlet in your home, or send power directly to your home outlets through this power transfer switch, which installs adjacent to a breaker panel. Of course, my favorite part of the Anchor Solix F3800 is that this has wheels. I can take this anywhere to rescue a friend whose power has gone out, traveling or camping, or even as a battery power system to store and use solar power here in my workshop. It's pretty sweet. If you want to learn more information, click the link in the video description below. Most things don't stick at all to this plastic, as I mentioned. But one thing that does stick is spray adhesive, at least temporarily. Once the adhesive fully dries, it slips right off. But there's a sweet spot where it's slightly dry but still tacky, and at that point it actually has some grip. This sent me down a new rabbit hole looking for a glue that never fully dries, like the adhesive on duct tape, which also sticks reasonably well to this plastic sheet, but is too heavy to fly. These non-drying adhesives are called PSAs, pressure-sensitive adhesives, and it's surprisingly hard to find them just sold in a can. I imagine there would be a big market for it if someone did bottle duct tape adhesive, but in any case, the one option I did find that fits into this category of stuff that sticks to polyethylene is this. This is called glue tape, and it's basically a little dispenser of pressure-sensitive, non-drying adhesive. This will stick our sheets together with minimal added weight, although it's still a fairly weak connection when using a peeling motion to separate the edges, it has enough tensile strength that the weak point around a joint is the plastic itself. Using this dispenser, I can lay down a strip of adhesive along the edge taped to the board. It can be a little bit tricky to apply the glue tape because it still just barely sticks well enough to the sheet to actually come off the dispenser properly. But with a few passes, you start to get the hang of it. I did a double pass just to make sure the seam would hold, and then pressed on the opposite edge to form a tube. Now we get to see the best part about making a tube. It can be done right from the roll in a continuous process. So now if we want to make this longer, we just pull the little bit of masking tape off as we slide the finished section to the end of the board, opening up space to repeat the process. The first edge of the new section of plastic is attached with more masking tape to straighten it out, and then we can use the glue dispenser to attach the opposite side lengthening this tube by six to eight feet with every addition.
After making my first balloon with two lengths of this tube, I had to give the end product an initial test, even though we're a little short on sunlight right now. I just want to see if it holds air and is light enough to fly. I'll test this by using a fire to generate hot air for lift. To hold the mouth of the balloon open, I decided to use two hula hoops. Both go over the outside of the tube, and then you pull the plastic over the first one and tuck it underneath the second, and that keeps the mouth of the tube open well enough to hold over the fire. Just like the plastic bag version, the other end of the tube is simply tied closed with a knot. These are pine fatwood fire starters, which are just ordinary pieces of split pine firewood from a part of the tree that was thoroughly saturated in flammable pine sap. These burn well enough in a metal bucket to lift the balloon, and they also generate quite a lot of soot in the smoke, which may be useful for other purposes later on. This got me so excited. It's such an easy process to keep making these tubes longer and longer. And if a little one flies, a big one with much more volume to weight should work even better. Wow. That already has quite a bit of lift. The most important thing about using these balloons is that you keep them tied down. It's one thing if you're filling them with hot air and they fall after a few minutes, but if we transition to solar power, they can easily reach thousands of feet if untethered, and be a real hazard to air traffic. I know my balloons can fly, so from now on I'll tie them to an anchor before even taking them outside. The best way to do that is to close one end of the tube with a knot, cut off the excess plastic leaving a few inches so the knot won't easily slip, and then tie on a string above the knot. That way, in order for the string to slip off, the plastic itself would have to come untied, which would release the air and cause the balloon to fall anyway. I did another test with the small balloon using a string and cinder block as the anchor, which is how I learned a block with sharp corners isn't a great idea. Perhaps best not to use the balloons in a blizzard either. A gust of wind pushed the balloon into my cinder block and tore a hole in the side. You can fix holes in these balloons, even big ones, by gathering up the plastic and sealing the hole off with a knot. They look a little funny afterward, but are still able to fly, assuming they're not weighed down by a growing layer of snow. With these lessons learned, I think we're ready to try a larger balloon. It took about 45 minutes to make this one about 50 feet long. We'll drag this out into the snow and see if we can get it started with a fire and then make the switch to solar power. It is currently quite windy out, but I think today is my only shot at sunlight. Uh, even though there's clouds in the sky right now, it's supposed to clear up over the next 45 minutes or so. This is a big balloon. <laughs> As with my previous tests, I'll be using the pine fire starters for the initial hot air lift. And then what I'm hoping will happen is that the black soot in the smoke will start absorbing sunlight inside of the balloon to keep the air warm. Basically, the soot should act in the same way as the charcoal powder in the weather balloon example from earlier. This might be complicated by other things contained in the smoke. For example, CO2 and water vapor, which are heavier than air and might offset the lift we get from solar heat. On the other hand, both CO2 and water vapor contribute to absorbing sunlight themselves, so it's hard to tell if they'll provide more lift because of added heat, or less lift because of added weight. It'll be interesting here to see what happens. Whoa. <laughs> oh, we are getting some real lift now. <laughs> Oh man, I think we might be just in time for the sun to come out here. <laughs> I think we might be just in time for the sun. Now at this point, the balloon is fully inflated and has plenty of lift, but we're still running on heat from the fire. The question is, will it keep flying or will it start to cool off and fall? 
In the meantime, this was giving me quite a challenge to keep the tube from blowing into my cameras or catching the tripods on the tether tied to the other end. I really <laughs> want to let go of this and let the, let the tether take it up, but I am 100% uh, certain it would fly into the trees. I actually had no idea that this would work because, camera down again, <laughs> I actually was pretty skeptical that this balloon would hold up at this larger size because there's a lot more air pressure at the top of this balloon than there would be for a smaller one. The glue tape ended up being pretty impressive to hold this plastic together even as the balloon crashed into things and was whipped back and forth repeatedly over about 20 minutes. A number of days had passed since making the balloon and testing it, and in the meantime the temperature had gotten down below zero degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of adhesives struggle with extreme temperature cycles like this, but it was great to see that the seam didn't come undone in storage. I think we could easily double the tube diameter and the seams would still hold. We just might have to make an even bigger balloon later on. So, did we succeed in making this balloon fly on solar power? And how can we know for sure? Well, the heat from the fire might make this fly for five minutes or so. But here we are, still with lift, after more than 20 minutes. More than that, because it's a partly cloudy day, you can watch the balloon fall when a cloud covers the sun. And then... As soon as the sun comes back out, that balloon just floats right up. <laughs> that is awesome! Whoa! <laughs> With the wind, a two and a half gallon jug is actually having a hard time holding this thing down. But it works. Even in the winter time, even at like 16 degrees Fahrenheit, the solar power takes it up. That is awesome. This was a huge success. These solar balloons will be an awesome summer project to entertain and teach a little science to kids. And I'm excited to think about other designs and applications for them. I actually only filmed this video because I'm currently waiting on items and shipping to continue on with my radiative cooling series. But I think this ended up being a nice break from the heavy research and development. And I really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video too, consider subscribing and be sure to leave me a comment. I read all of them, and I really like hearing from anyone who takes the time to watch these things. You can also support me on Patreon, but no pressure there. I don't want anyone signing up for that that can't afford it. All right, we got to let the air out of this before it gets destroyed. Do I let it go? I think I let it go. Air's out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.